Now we're going to talk about the deformer soft and hard. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is select any, go into the tool palette, select any poly primitive. We'll go over Sphere 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make it a poly mesh 3D, then go down to the very bottom here under initialize and where it says Q cube, change this X, Y, and Z res to six. So you can tap on that number there, tap six, tab over to the next column, six, six, hit enter and now hit this Q cube button and now we have a Q cube divided up in six edge loops in every uh, axis. So before we get into deformers, let's talk about masking because that's going to be important to how we mask our deformer. So uh, if we hold down control and we have mask pin selected, you can change it to any masking that you want to, but we'll stick with mask pin for now. You can hold down control and then you can drag out a masking rectangle. And if you hold down the space bar, you can actually move this rectangle around. So if I want to mask this top corner of vertices here, I can move that mask here and then, and then just lift up on my pin and that'll go ahead and mask this corner out. Now, what I can do now is I can hit W and I can move these vertices around that are unmasked or I can control tap in my document and now move these vertices that are unmasked. So by control tapping in my document, I'm inverting that mask. If I want to clear this mask completely, I can just control drag out of my document, removes all of the masking. And of course you can mask more areas than one. You can mask over here, you can mask on this side, you can mask down in this corner, and then you can control tap to invert that mask and then you can use scale and move those vertices and then control drag to unmask your entire object. Now, if your entire object is unmasked, you can invert this masking. So it's all unmasked, you can control tap. And of course that still inverts your mask. The fact that we didn't have a mask on there now masks the entire object. And now you can hold down control and alt and you can unmask any, any section. So you can see when I hold down control, it's darker. If I hold down alt, it's lighter. And if I use the space bar, I can move it around. I can use these combinations to go ahead and unmask areas of your object here. Another function function that was, uh, I think, introduced in ZBrush 4R8 is if you, if you have a completely unmasked object, then you hold down Control, and then you hold down Alt. If it's already unmasked, what it's going to do is go ahead and mask this area and invert it for you. So you're basically telling ZBrush, I want only this corner right here to be unmasked. So instead of going Control tap to mask, Control Alt to unmask, all you need to do is hold down Control and Alt on an unmasked object and it'll mask everything except for that corner. Now, why are we talking about masking when we want to talk about the deformer? Well, the reason we're doing that is if I hit this little gear icon right here, you're going to see we have a deformer, a deformer hard, and a deformer soft. Uh, basic deformer functionality we can talk about here. So we'll go ahead and hit the deformer, and you're going to see it gives us a lattice of deformer points on our object. You can control the resolution of these, you can see X divide, Z divide, and Y divide here. So if we change these both down to two, you're going to see we're getting fewer control points. Now each of these control points is selectable, so you can just tap on these control points and it'll go ahead and select them. And then you can use this gizmo right here to control just this control point right here. Now let's say we wanted to scale this entire side up. What we can do is, just like when we were masking, you can hold down control and alt and it'll go ahead and select all of these points on this side. If we want to get rid of those points, control tap, or I'm sorry, control drag, that'll basically essentially when we were unmasking, it's now unselecting all of these points. If we want to invert this, we can control tap and it'll bring all of those points back. If you want to see this illustrated a little bit better, let's grab those X divides and we'll increase them both in all directions. You can see here's all of our points back. We have uh, X divide of five, five and, uh, let's make this one five too. There we go. So now we have five control points on this entire object. So again, just like masking, we can control drag to unmask everything. You can control tap to bring them all back. Um, if you want to select just a few points, you can hold down control and alt and grab these. And in fact, let's, let's make this really obvious. We're going to make these all six in every direction. Actually, let's make it seven. So when we set these all to seven, we remember originally we had six subdivisions here. If we make the deformer to seven, now every single point on that deformer has an underlying vertice attached to it. So just like when we were masking and unmasking vertices, because these deformer points line up with these individual spaces, you can unmask this area here, use this gizmo, and we're basically just moving these verts along using these deformer points. Now you're gonna see when I move this out, it starts kind of rounding this corner out. If you change the smoothness here, we have X, Y, and Z smoothness. If you make this smoothness is set at one right now, if you set it to zero, now it's going to deform these vertices exactly 
how you would expect if you were to grab those vertices individually. Let's go ahead and undo that. Control drag to go ahead and unmask everything and then control tap to bring all your points back. Now you might be asking, why don't I just mask and unmask vertices instead of dealing with all these deformer points? Well, the power of this deformer isn't to make a deformer point wherever you have a corresponding vertice. So if I select a vert here and I move it out, you're gonna see it's grabbing that vert. And if I change that smoothness, all these smoothnesses down, it's gonna just grab that vert exactly. Uh, that's not how I'd use this deformer. Basically, where you would wanna use your deformer is the ability to say do something like let's take your x y and z divides all the way back down to two so we have very few deformer points in fact just one on each corner and now let's say i want to taper this to one end if i hold down control and alt and just unselect these points and then take these and scale them you can see i can now deform this entire side here and taper it down so what that allows me to do is to manipulate larger areas of my mesh using fewer points and if I undo back out of here and I say go to delete this deformer and I try to taper this object now by like maybe masking half of it and then shrinking it down, you're going to see like, well, now I got to mask this and mask this and mask this. Or I suppose I could try and go through here and hold down control shift, go into my clipping and try and clip it to a taper and it starts mangling my geometry. Much easier to just go into your deformer here, hold down control alt to grab these points and then just taper it however you want. To give you another example with more points that are a little bit more arbitrary than just a cube, let's go, let's hit the comma key, go into your tools menu, and we'll go ahead and grab this demo head here. Now with this one selected, we're gonna go to geometry and we're gonna go to, let's drop the subdivisions down to one, do delete higher, hit W, and then go back in here and choose your deformer. And now again, it's still maintain our deformer settings. We're still on X, Y, and Z divides of two. So now if I hold down control, alt, and then drag, we'll just get these upper corners here. And now you're just deforming this object from this top right. Or we can grab, hold down, you know, control drag to unmask all of these objects and then control alt to grab these top points. And now you can move this lattice like this. If you need more resolution, all you gotta do is just drag these here. So now you have more points. And let's say we just want to move these face area points. I'm going to hold down control, alt, and then drag over those. I'm going to swing around to the left here. And let's say we don't want these points selected. I'm just going to control, drag over those to mask them. And now these are the only points left unmasked. And I can just pull these out. And now it's just using that area of influence around these points to go ahead and move this out. Now you're going to see as I move the smoothness slider, it's going to be either very smooth or very hard, those transitions. Let's go ahead and grab his head up here too. So I'm gonna hold down control alt and we'll just unmask these points here. And then we can just mask those points and they'll just pull this up. And then here we can show that transition change. Let's go ahead and scale this out as well. So you can change the smoothness here and the X and Y. So here it is uh, being fully affected by those points. And then as we, trend, as, in, as we drag that smoothness up, it's allowing these vertices to average a little bit. So they deform a little bit softer. So it's not quite such a harsh transition. So back to our object here, if we hit W and we go into our deformer here, one thing I forgot to mention is you do have X, Y, and Z symmetry. So if you wanna make your deformer symmetrical, symmetrical across the X axis, just grab this and drag it out. And now you can see it's set to one, which is parallel symmetry. So now we only have access to one side of the deformer dots because the other side is just gonna follow suit. So what we can do is we can hold down control alt, grab this corner dots down here, move this around and you're gonna see it's gonna grab those corner dots as well. Now, because we have it set to parallel, it's just gonna drag those, when I drag these dots to the left, it's gonna drag those dots to the left. If you want to, you can set this to two, which is mirror. And now when I drag these dots to the left, it's gonna drag those dots to the right. So as I drag those out, I can go ahead and this transition between them, I can soften that or I can harden it. So you can see when I harden it, it goes all the way back up. And these control points here are maintaining the shape much nicer. If I relax this, it's gonna soften those transitions. Now, if you don't wanna deal with, if you know you always wanna do a hard or a soft transition, instead of, let's go ahead and undo back to our regular cube here. Instead of going into your deformer, all you gotta do is go to deformer hard, and now you're gonna see we still have X symmetry turned on, but we've lost any of the soft and hard transitions. So if I go ahead and control alt drag this one, and I drag these corner points down, you're gonna see it's always gonna be a hard transition. If I undo that and go into deformer soft, 
and I hold down Control Alt and grab this one. It looks like on Deformer Soft. Let's go ahead and do our X symmetry again. Hold down Control Alt to grab this corner point. You're going to see when I drag this down. Let's make that two so it's mirrored. You're going to see it's always going to be a soft transition. So you know if you're always going to do a hard or a soft transition instead of going into the deformer and changing your X, Y, and Z hard and soft, you can do that globally X, Y, and Z axis at the same time using deformer hard or deformer soft.